Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of our Research Essentials series for Year 7 to 10. So today we're delving into the concept of fake news. So we're looking at the spread of misinformation and disinformation. So that's information that essentially isn't true, but spreads throughout the internet. I'm going to give you some really easy to remember strategies that help you evaluate a website and think critically about the information that you find. So that basically means that you don't just believe everything you see and hear. So we're going to look at those specific tools which helps you tell the difference between a reliable website and an unreliable one. So let's get started. So what is fake news? The term fake news doesn't really make sense. The news is meant to report on things that are really happening. It used to be dis used as a term to describe satirical news, which is clearly a joke like you can see here. Harry and Meghan agreed to split housework 50-50 between their servants. So it's satire, it's meant to be taken as a joke. In more recent years, it's been used to describe the deceptive practices of people or companies that aid in the spread of disinformation or misinformation. So information that is false and deliberately created to cause harm or information that is false. It's not created with the intention of causing harm necessarily, but it's still untrue. So there's a couple of different types of what we would call now fake news. It's also used to try and discredit authentic news. So perhaps something is actually true, but someone will cry the term fake news to discredit things that, that don't hold with their belief system or their political views. The age of social media has made the spread of this misinformation or fake news um, really easy to do. So that's because users are more vulnerable when they're on social media. If you're on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or something like that, you're there just to relax and hang out, chat to friends. You don't necessarily have your guard up. So it's easy to sort of impact your belief systems. And it also a lot of the fake news that we see being spread around is highly emotive and it's designed to deliberately um, make you react really strongly. So when we head out onto the internet and we're trying to find some information, there's loads of examples of misinformation or disinformation or what. This is an example I found here. Chemical in McDonald's French fries could cure baldness. And they're obviously saying that that has come from a study, so it must be credible. Now, when you read the actual study, that's not at all what the scientists were saying. There was just a similar ingredient that was used in their recipe for curing baldness, it was not at all linked to McDonald's fries and that is definitely not true. So another example of the ways that misinformation or disinformation spreads around is under research news. So there's like a 24 hour news cycle these days where we're always needing new content and new news to be coming out. So, so it's said that these two identical twin brothers went up into space and one came back with 7% different DNA to his twin brother. So if he came back with that much difference, um, he would be an entirely different species. He wouldn't even be a banana. That's how different he would be from a human being. So when we're looking through social media and other places on the internet, there's often a lot of people with a lot of opinions and sometimes they'll present their opinions as fact rather than um, actually looking to the experts to give more factual information about a topic. And sometimes you believe people's opinions because you may not know any different um, and you may be vulnerable when you're looking through social media and places like that. And sometimes those opinions can lead to bigger conspiracy theories like the earth is flat or 5G causes coronavirus, things like that, that are certainly not founded on factual information or credible information. Things like clickbait, which is there primarily just to get a response out of you so that you click on it and it'll take you through to some kind of advertising or someone will make money off you. Like this headline here, which is definitely not true. There's lots of new kinds of deceptive practices that are coming out too, like this one, which is deep fakes, where you can almost make anyone say anything that you want. So you have to be really careful when you're looking through uh, YouTube and places like that that have videos to make to make sure that the person you're watching is actually who they say they are. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things, at least not in a public address. But someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. So were you able to spot uh, from the beginning that it wasn't really Barack Obama talking, it was actually the actor Jordan Peele? 
it's pretty tricky to tell and there's lots of these these types of deep fakes out there so we have to be really careful that when we're listening to people speak we think about our intuition would this be something that person would say and check the sources so how do we combat all this uh, misinformation and disinformation that's flying around everywhere on the internet so some of the top tips that we use at the state library is to use domain endings. So if you're doing a topic, let's say we've got that topic that we had last week, um, is Ned Kelly a hero, why, why not? And we use our keywords and we type in Ned Kelly, I get 30 million results, nearly 40 million results. Now of all of these results through Google, a lot of them are going to have a domain ending .com. So there's lots of different types of domain endings, .com, .edu, .gov. That's what I mean when I say domain ending. Now, a .com domain ending actually stands for commercial, which means anybody can have a .com. I could buy Kobe is the best teacher in the world .com, and I'm allowed to have that, and it may or may not be true. So information on .com websites do not need to be fact-checked as a general rule. If you want to filter to see the more reliable websites, you can use this really nifty easy trick. So you type in your keywords, whatever they are, and you type site, colon, and then whatever domain ending you want. So if you want an education domain ending, so edu, and edu domain endings do have to be fact checked generally. The other domain ending that's quite good is .gov government websites, again, they have to be fact-checked as well. So let's say for this one, we use a gov, site colon gov. I only want to see government websites relating to Ned Kelly because I know they're going to be a little bit more reliable. Now, Ned Kelly is also Australian, so I'm also just going to pop um, AU there as well. So let's see how we go with that. So now we've only got 66,000 results and all of the websites that I see are all going to be government websites. So I've got rid of millions, literally millions of .com websites that probably don't have reliable information on them and I wouldn't want to be using them in my assignment because I can't be necessarily sure that they're going to contain reliable fact-checked information. So as a quick summary, .com or .net, not so good, doesn't need to be fact-checked. .edu, pretty good, does need to be fact-checked. .gov, again, pretty good. .org is an interesting one. It stands for organization and you have to be really careful. What is the organization? Is it an organization that I can trust? Zoos Victoria is an organization. They might have some really valuable um, information about animals. In fact, I know they do have really reliable, great information about animals. So one of the easiest tips when you're searching Google is just to use this site colon and then the domain ending that you want. Now, just make sure you don't put any spaces in between your colon and your dot and your edu or your gov. So have a go at doing that. Type your keywords into Google and then use site, colon, and whatever domain ending you want and make sure that those websites that you come up with in your search are as reliable as they can be. Now, even when you find, you filter your results and you find those government websites and education websites, it's still really important to look at everything, all the types of information we find with a critical eye. So we need to be questioning and making sure that the information is reliable. So at the State Library, we use this test called the Krabby Test. Easy to remember, you won't forget it. And what it stands for, C is currency. So have a look, is there a timestamp on the website? You want it to be hopefully within the last five years. R is for reliability. So what's that domain ending? Is it a .com? Is it a .edu? Is it a government website? Where is that information coming from? A is for authority. Whoever is giving you the information, do you think they have the authority to tell you what to believe? So if it's Bob from Facebook, you have to think, does Bob have that authority to tell me that thing or is that just his opinion? If you're looking at a .com website, have a look at who wrote it. If it doesn't have an author written there, it's probably not reliable because you can't tell whether or not the person actually knows what they're talking about. P is for purpose or point of view. So that was kind of what we mentioned earlier where we have to think about, is this person giving me their opinion or are they giving me actual facts and are they citing where they got that fact from and how they found that information and things like that. Also, when you're looking at purpose, a lot of the time when you're going through websites, especially .com websites, the purpose will actually be to sell you something. It will be an advertisement. And sometimes it's really tricky to tell whether it's an advertisement or whether it's actual reliable information. 
The next P is you need to pair it with other research. So you can't just rely on one piece of information and go, yep, that is all the information I need. Great, I'm going to put that in my assignment and I'm going to believe what that person's saying. You need to check that other reliable sources are also concluding the same type of information. The last thing is you. You've got good instincts, you're a smart person, you need to think carefully when you're looking at information. What are your instincts telling you? Is this reliable or is it not reliable? And trust those instincts. So if you're at home or you're at school right now, I want you to pause the screen and I want you to have a look at this website you won't be able to find it. Don't go and type that in because it was made by us at the State Library. I want you to have a look at this and tell me whether it passes the crappy test. So apply that crappy test. Tell me whether or not it passes. Have a good look and read that information. All right, so I hope you're able to apply the crappy test fairly quickly to this one. It's a nice and easy one just to get you started using the crappy test. But as you can see, for currency, it was made in 2007, so it's definitely not current. It's not up-to-date information. As for reliability, we can see it's a .com here, so mm, leaning towards it probably isn't reliable. A, as for authority, I can't see an author here. It's not telling me where this information has come from or who's written it, so I can't really tell whether there's any authority, but it doesn't really sound like it. P is for purpose, so let's have a look at the purpose. If we read the information, it sounds pretty opinionated. He's a bloody Australian hero, so maybe their purpose is just to share their opinions with us. We've also got this advertisement down the bottom, so it could the purpose could be just to advertise something. The next P is pair, so we'd have to go and look at other websites and see if it agrees with um, the information that's being presented here. And the last one is why, so you. What do you think? If we read the information, we can tell pretty quickly it is an unreliable website, but it's amazing how much of this kind of website actually exists out there and how many people will quote information from this website or start to believe information from these kinds of websites. So just make sure that that isn't you and you apply the crappy test wherever you go on the internet. You can also see this picture up here. That's not actually Ned Kelly. So hopefully you found today's episode useful. Remember to use the site colon and then choose your domain ending and apply the crappy test to any websites that you find. Have a go at finding two different websites now, maybe one that passes the crappy test and one that fails the crappy test. Good luck everyone, see you next week. Bye.